In this video, we will understand the purpose of Firefox 9 and some key concepts necessary to get started. Firefox 9 provides guidance for accounting of financial instruments. So, to understand what it's all about, you probably should know what a financial instrument is. A financial instrument is a contract which gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity instrument of other entity. An equity instrument is any contract that evidences a residual interest in the assets of an entity after deducting all of its liabilities. I also want you to remember a short and simple fact at this point. To the shareholder, the equity instrument is an asset. But to the company issuing these shares, these same equity instruments comprise the capital of the company. So remember, for the issuing entity, the equity instruments are capital and not a liability. And this takes us to a uh, financial liability. A financial liability is any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or another financial asset to another entity means uh, it is simply an outflow of cash or other financial asset or to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable to the entity which means it is simply a net outflow of cash or other financial asset resulting out of the exchange. To sum it up, in any case, a liability is a contract which results in a net outflow of cash or other financial assets. And that leads us to a financial asset. A financial asset is any asset that is cash, so any currency is a financial asset, or a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity, just like the liability counterpart, which was an obligation to pay cash or other financial asset. Or to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially favorable to the entity, which means a net inflow of cash or other financial assets, just opposite of the liability counterpart, which was a net outflow of the cash or other financial assets. So far, the definition of financial asset and financial liability seems to be the exact opposites, except the definition of asset also includes cash, whereas liability can only be an obligation to pay cash. That's because there's no such thing as a negative cash. But the definition of asset includes an additional item which is not included in the definition of liability. And that is an equity instrument of another entity. Why? Why an equity instrument can be an asset but not a liability? Well, that's because the company's own equity instrument are capital and not a liability. And because the entity's own equity instruments are capital, such instruments are outside the scope of Firefox 9 altogether. But for the holder of those same equity instruments, these are assets and therefore within the scope of Firefox 9. Also note that the terminology used in the definition is very broad. For example, a contractual right to receive a cash or another financial asset from another entity is a financial asset. Which means that leases or investment in subsidiaries would also be a financial asset. But we have separate standards for many such assets. So, here is the rule of thumb. Whenever we have specific standards for a specific type of financial assets, we would apply those standards rather than our first nine unless those standards allow or prescribe certain treatments in accordance with IFRS 9 and to the extent prescribed in those standards. Such specific standards include IFRS 10, IS 27, IS 28, IFRS 16, IS 19, IFRS 17, IFRS 2, IS 37, specifically reimbursement within that standard, IFRS 15 and forward contracts related to IFRS 3. In addition to these exclusions, there is a surprising inclusion in the scope of IFRS 9. The contracts for delivery of non-financial items like commodity or livestock may also be accounted under IFRS 9. For example, a contract to purchase a flock of sheep may also be accounted for under IFRS 9. Surprised? 
Well, actually, that's allowed when such contracts can be settled in cash or other financial assets, which means such contracts may settle in cash or by actual delivery. But of course, there's more detail about when such contracts shall and shall not be treated under RFRS 9, but I don't want to scare you off right now. Uh, there are also details about when a loan commitment would be covered under IFRS 9. And there are details about when contracts that may be settled in entities own equity instrument shall be regarded as financial assets or liabilities. Apart from these three scary points, we have understood that IFRS 9 is a catch-all standard which deals with the counting of financial assets and financial liabilities except those covered in other specialized standards. So, have a great day.